Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Carrie Waltz and I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. Have you ever been on a trip and wanted to do something creative but just didn't have the time because your schedule was so stressed and just to get from one point to the next and all you did was luckily take pictures? Well, sometimes my trips are like that. Sometimes I can sneak in one or two small quick journal entries and then sometimes I just have to revisit those when I get back. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's times when I need to be creative on the go and get a little therapy, but then there's times when it just isn't feasible to stop and make the journal entry. But what I love about doing journal entries is the fact that I can do them on location on plein air if you want to, if you have time, or I can revisit the memories of that trip when I go to my uh, gallery of photos and I flip through and I think of the memories and how I felt when I took that picture and I can just relive that moment again. So I'm going to begin doing a series of journal entries where I'm demoing how I paint. When I'm on location and doing plein air, I often don't have time to get the camera out and video the painting as I'm painting it. So several of you have enjoyed my demos and I think knowing that I'm reliving something that I've recently experienced and sharing that with you and showing you how I would do it uh, if I was there in person, uh, but doing it at the ease of my table and my <laughs> my desk, it makes it a little simpler. So I hope you enjoy this first entry and uh, we'll see how it goes. Let me know if you like this format and um, I'll continue. Thank you for subscribing if you have. I really do appreciate it and my channel has grown to the point I can monetize and I'm getting a few cents here and there and I hope to do a few more things that might bring income in a passive way and uh, not interfere with your viewing. So thank you again for being a part of my art journey and my YouTube trip. If you started at the very beginning, my hair was about to here when, <laughs> when I started and it's quite long now. So anyway, I just had to throw that out there. Um, have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoy the demo. I'm going to show you what I have to paint with. This is what I would have had if I had painted this on location. This photo was from um, on the on the way into Wears Valley one morning when I was heading to Elkmont Campground to see some of the painters in the uh, plein air event at the Smoky Mountains. This is an extra phone. It's actually my brand new Pixel 8 Pro. I don't have the SIM card in it yet, so I can't make phone calls with it, but it does have internet because it's connected to Wi-Fi. So I'm using that this morning. So I'm filming with my current camera that is taking the video. So when I travel, I have a limited palette, Daniel Smith with um, Perline, I believe it's red, Hansa yellow, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, my additional palette is Peacock Blue with Mission watercolor. This is Quinacrin and Magenta QOR, Dioxazine Purple QOR, and um, Gamboge with Daniel Smith. So all professional grade watercolors, and you can see that they're a mess. Okay, also in here, underneath my kneading eraser, is a little spot of white gouache. I will want that to help me get the smokiness in uh, the, the fog of the mountains. So I'm going to just start with this one, and I'm going to be painting it only with this brush. It is a Pentel water brush. It's my favorite water brush. I love the fact that it has, this is a size large. It does have stain on the end, but as you can see when I wipe it on the paper towel, that there is nothing that comes off. So because I'm looking at this image, it's a soft transition from the sky to the distant hill. And to show atmospheric perspective, you want to show that it gets lighter as it goes further back in the distance. And this was one of the ones that uh, morning that I just had to stop and pull over and take my camera out and photograph this spot. I'm going to paint it as though I'm there and it would be done fairly fast because things quickly change when you're out in the morning. Because it is a very light sky, I'm going to go ahead and wet my paper. I'm, it is shiny. I don't know if you'll be able to, you know, I can sort of see the shine. 
and it's about a third of the way down that that sky um, has some color. Uh, I test on an a index card, and this is a freezer sheet that I have wrapped around a piece of paper, uh, the last page that I painted in. All right, so I do want a blue tone. I want it to be very pale. So I'm going to test that. That's that's pretty pale. Might not be as pale a blue as the sky, but I'm going to pick just a tiny bit more at the top. But watercolor does dry lighter than um, than it currently shows. About a third of the way down, you see that first hill, but I'm going to actually lift out some of the sky that I just painted with the paper towel just to indicate a little bit of clouds. So that's going to be lighter than the mountains in the distance and hopefully help that bit of paper to dry fast because when I'm painting outside, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. All right, that is probably a little bluer than I want. I'm going to add a tiny bit of burnt sienna to it that's better all right so it still might be too it still might be too light oh it might be okay I'm just going to do those distant hills and I want it to fade down below I don't want it to be too dark so I'm going to come over just a little bit and uh, lighten that I'm going to let it fade down below there's a little hill back here that's a little more distinct not sure what mountain that is at this point but I'm just letting it I want the I want the watercolor to not end on a hard line see there's sort of a hard line there but I think it's just because the paper was dry then I look for the next hill the next hill is greener than the previous one so I'm going to mix a little blue with that little peacock that's way that doesn't take much at all for that to change colors that's going to because it's in the distance. See how that's greener than that is, but it's not very dark. This part right here is darker, and this part right here is darker, and then it fades out. So I, that's what I want to try to capture. So I'm going to put in this first hill right here. It comes up above the other one, and the way I'm going to fade it out is add water. So if I add enough water, it's going to give me that look of, um, and th this is a darker uh, color than the previous one. So I'm going to just try to touch where the hills were and fade it out. And I don't even mind the, um, it's called bloom, the blooms. So that's wetter than what was there and that wasn't dry, so it's pushing into that and, and I'm alright with that because it's fog. I might not even need the gouache at this point. We'll see, we'll just see. Alright, then this next layer is bluer than that. That was actually in the sun where this is in the shadows. So I want a little bluer. So I'm just going to go back to that same little pile. There's very little paint in there. Okay, I think that might work. Now this time, it's come, I'm going to start over here well, it's actually this one right here. I need to do that one first because this one is in front of that because this is this is uh, further away, so uh, it's lighter. And so I'm going to just hit that here. It's all right if it blurs in a little bit to the other. Um, if you don't want it to blur up, you can tilt your paper. Right now, that's too hard of a line. I want to wet it and drag it down so it kind of just disappears. Okay, I'm, I'm all right with that so far. So this over here should be fairly dry. I'm going to get a little bit more blue. Touch of, now the reason why I'm using the burnt sienna is the opposite of blue is orange. And there's some orange, a hint of orange in the burnt sienna. So it neutralizes the blue to make it not be so intense. Okay, so this, this is kind of a blue green which is similar to here. It might be too uh, dark, so all I do is squeeze a little water in there. Now this line goes above some of these others, so 
it's darker, so it can go above some of those, but I want it dark enough that I it kind of obliterates those other ones. So I'm, I'm going to put a little more water on here and then just kind of let it fade out. Now the hardest part of this is letting it dry. I'm coming back and I'm lifting off some to give the illusion of the um, fog because I don't want anything to be too, too hard at, of a line at this point. And I'll come back with the darker things in a minute. So while I have, um, I need to mix some more of that color. So both the blues, the blue, the turquoise doesn't take, man, I don't even know if you can get this mission paint anymore. I looked it up and couldn't find it, but it's so intense. It doesn't take, but just a tiny, tiny bit. All right, so let's see the color. Uh, that, that might do. Uh, again, watercolor dries lighter. Then, um, ooh, let me get some of that off. Okay, some of this down here. This is, again, in the fog, but it's not the closest one up front. So I don't want it too, too exact. So I just fill in little bits of it. I want the darker part to be where some of the shadows might, might be toward the bottom. I'm going to come over here. And do another, see that's really dark. All I have to do is come back in and tap, tap it a little bit more with the water. That's the joy of this brush is it, um, the tip is always wet because of the gravity. So I'm just going to pick a little bit more of that up and just brush in down to where the line of the grass would be. Because I'm going to have this other tree in front. And you see how that puddle landed there. If I don't want that puddle there, I, I tap my brush and I go touch that puddle and my brush acts like a, a uh, sponge and kind of just lifts off. So touch, dry it off, touch, dry it off. Anyway, that's just one thing you can do with it. So I'm getting the feel of a misty, I really like how, oh, sorry, I really like how, how that has a nice feel to it. And I think I got the the, the sky lighting up. All right, so now the hard part is going to be I'm going, I want this tree to seem like it's peeking out of the fog, but then going back into the fog. So I need a darker tone. Again, I'm using the same colors. This is a you know, good monochromatic study where you're basically using, using one tone, although one is bluer than the other or greener. It's going to even be greener up front, but, um, I like the coolness of the of the colors we're using. Burnt sienna is the only warmth that we've used at this point. All right, so this might be too green, but I, it's a it's a fairly neutral green. It's dark. I want it to be dark. Um, when I was there in person, the the tree wasn't as dark, but it is silhouetted somewhat. So I'm going to just see how how this will do if I if it's too too green. Okay, I'm just dabbing, indicating leaves. I want to leave some open spots to make it feel like um, it's not so solid that you can't see a little bit of um, sky holes through it. Now, I went back, got more paint, but I'm going to squeeze the water into the brush while I'm painting what's down below it because it's getting mixed with the fog so I want it to be a little more obscure and I might have to come back and paint that part even darker to get the feel of the fog in this one so while I'm working with these closer trees I still want them in the fog so I don't want them too hard edged and I don't want a high contrast I want it to kind of blur together and I think when I come back and make that a little darker That'll work. Do you want it darker? So I want to add a little more of the burnt sienna with the uh, ultramarine blue. It makes a really good dark. Barely, barely touching the paper because it gives me just the tip of the brush. 
okay now while I've got that color might as well make a little bit more of it I want to work on this tree over here because this should be dry so I'm, I keep going back and forth on um, on on the paper so it's a little bit lower than okay see I'm turning my brush almost on its side you kind of get a dry brush effect barely touch the surface notice I did not did not draw the branches first I really like to lay in the foliage and then and then put in a branch or trunk whatever's needed all right so I'm just kind of squinting my eye to see I've got a enough detail in there and the trunk is a little covered with some foliage too so make that I want that darker so I'm picking up just the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna with very little um, water on my brush barely barely touch the brush there's times when you don't even have to to show the branches it's just suggested do you want to show the trunk and I want to show some of the dark grass in the foreground I want that a little darker burnt sienna double check it and make it a little wider I am not squeezing paint or, or water out of this at this point I'm just dragging a touch laying it sideways dragging it down that gives it kind of a jagged edge at the bottom because there's grass in front of it that's going to um, fill in that space so now I'm going to do a little bit of the drag up so it won't be quite so even at the top there is a shrub or, or a darker, um, probably like the top of a tree. I'm going to put a little bit of that in here. Just to add a little difference in the foliage. Now I want it a little greener. So I'm going to pick up a little of the yellow. It's all in kind of shadows. So instead of trying to draw a lot of little grasses, I'm just laying down my brush and dragging up. And okay. Well, what do you think? That kind of gives me the feel of this. This is a little warmer. Um, I could have possibly added some gouache to create the, the haziness in the distance, but I think what I did... Uh, gave it enough feel that this is in the foreground and uh, the rest is back in fog so I can probably just need to leave it alone before I ruin it I have a tendency to uh, overwork things at times so that never happens to you does it okay number one making uh, an image a painting that I wished I could have painted on location but wasn't able to because I was heading somewhere else on a schedule. I pulled my car over, took a quick photo, and headed on. When I'm looking through my camera, this looks very pink and purple, and it really isn't. It's, it's more a subtle pale blue. So what I painted is actually more true than what you're seeing on, on the um, camera. And I might end up just superimposing the image from my phone where my where my other phone was sitting so I'll see what looks better but it looks really pink and purple here and it isn't in real life so it's just how it's transferred via the uh, video so that was real time I didn't speed it up or anything so most of my journal entries probably take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes 
there are some that I spend a lot more time on, but uh, I didn't draw ahead of time. I just went one line at a time and I started at the farthest point and the farthest point in this one was where the lightest light was. And when you're dealing with watercolor, you want to pay attention to where the lightest light is because the lightest light is going to be the color of your paper. And if you have to bring in white gouache and mix it with something lighter, then that's allowed. Heck, there's no rules in my journaling. You can you can put stickers on things that don't work out or put a quote on it if it if you don't like how it looks. But you can even glue something on top of it if you want to. So it's just for you. I'll put here uh, on my way to Elkmont, uh, had to stop for the fog. And I'll date this according to the date that I took the photograph, not the date I painted it. So that really helps me when I look back at my time frame. I hope you've enjoyed today's demo and have a super day.